Welcome to the Epic Man Podcast, where we let our curiosities and theories run wild and sometimes talk relevant news. I'm Josiah, and with me, my two friends and co-host, Ben and Michael. How are you guys doing today? Wow. That good, huh? I'm <laughs> doing great. Listen, I'm excited. <laughs> We're going to talk just, about some cool stuff today, probably. I just was hoping... Yeah, we're going to talk about people... some cool stuff, Ben. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know, I like who, that. Who can some be sure? Cool I have stuff. no idea. I, sometimes we talk about cool things, and sometimes we talk about giants. So, you know... Oof. Oof. There's a lot on that one. You know, you, you really shouldn't be dissing giants like that, because giants are freaking epic. And they could squish you, so... Like, yeah. yeah. Sounds terrible. You literally like the giant sloth, which is a giant Yeah, but sloth. it's a giant, like, animal. Not like a giant uh, person. <laughs> like giant people are way cooler than giant no. people. Yeah. You know what? So Ben you know is Midas confirmed. I don't yep. want any slander against my sloth. Okay. No, there's gonna be a lot of slander against your sloth because you know what died? Your sloth. You know what there's still people in the world doing? Being giants. What is the acceptable hype before you start hating people then? I don't hate any of them. Just, no. just, what? Scare it me. feels like hate. <laughs> They're not even around anymore, Ben. You don't even yeah, scare giants. Like, I mean, there are giants around, but yeah. Ben hates them. Oh, well, okay. You <laughs> like, know what? <laughs> you must really hate the N- NBA. All those freaking tall guys running around. Every time he watches The Princess Bride, he just gets super angry at Fezzik. He's a freaking <laughs> giant. Oh, my god! Kill him. Kill him. Yeah. Don't even get, you know, don't get wow. started on like, You're taking this fish. to a whole other level. <laughs> I'm even getting started on the movie Big Fish and the giant in that movie. Oh, man. Dude, that giant turned out to be a nice guy. Yeah. Dude. Is it the same as, like, when you watch, like, movies like The Borrowers or things like that, when, like, the people are big, but, like, the people are really small, but, like, everybody around them is big? Do you hate those people, too? Is it, like, perspective? Or is it just specifically (laughs) regular-sized people versus tall people? I think Ben likes small people. I think he's fine with small people. Like the smaller the better. Fine with anybody, really. The smaller the better. (laughs) I'm saying that I don't care to talk about giants. That does not mean does not mean that I hate giants. Gulliver's travels is like Ben's kink. Uh, He's like, oh my gosh, dude. That time when he goes to that place and he's tiny and small. Oh. Oh oh, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Look at all those tiny people. (laughs) <laughs> oh poor Ben Gulliver's Travels is an interesting story it, really it is. is doesn't he end up in a place where he's small too and then yeah. everyone else is big yeah. too yeah yep. yeah. he goes all kinds of weird places that, So that book is so weird it is I, yeah. I remember just watching it as I watched the movie a lot as a kid and then I read the book and I never really understood <laughs> what was going no. on <laughs> no it's because it doesn't make sense <laughs> Then what oh, were those people weird. called? The Yahoos or something like that? What? Lilliputians? Well, yeah. Lilliputians. I could have sworn that in the movie they were called the Yahoos. Maybe it not. Well, been. that's because the movies are awful. Yeah. They don't do a good job of translating. No. Hey, there's that one movie that wasn't too bad from like the 80s or 90s. They're all all awful. Travels. It wasn't bad. Well. You never watched it, so you wouldn't know. Probably wasn't as bad as Mad Max Fury Road. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh man, you know people from this podcast aren't going to understand that reference at all. But... No, they're not. But that's the best thing about it. So, uh... so yeah. Anyway, little Pusians, <laughs> little Pusians, Ben, little Pusians. How do I know? How do I know more about you know like books and art, literary art than you do, Ben? Yeah, you're supposed to be the book writer here. Yeah, and also. We all also, write. <laughs> you coming at me about Mad Max Fury Road when you don't even know what the Lilliputians are is kind of, you know. You know or, what? Or Sisyphus. I had to explain that. Greek mythology. Why do you hate Greek mythology, Ben? I know Sisyphus. why he hates Greek mythology. All the giants. There are a lot oh, of giants. There are a lot of giants. He's like that freaking Zeus. He's so tall. Now, nah, well, I Zeus, I hate most Zeus anyway. Why do, you, why do you hate Zeus, dude? Zeus is a scumbag. <laughs> Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like, so is just about everybody else in Greek mythology. Yeah, yeah. they're all scumbags. Yeah. It's because they're tall. There's like nobody <laughs> I like in Greek mythology. That, that says a lot about, um, you know. I think I think I liked Athena. 
she's awful too but yeah, yeah. You know, you but she like, like the Athena she like, like busted open a Zeus's head and I thought that was kind of cool so yeah, that's mm-hmm. pretty sick uh Theseus was you know Theseus is kind of cool I guess yeah yeah you know Hera. Hera's all right I guess what's the what's the messenger guy Hermes Hermes he's not bad you yeah. like Herpes Hermes is kind of a little oh, creep. Dude. Yeah, Herpes, yes. Hermes is awful. <laughs> yeah. Dude, my yeah. favorite interpretation of like some of the gods from Greek mythology is like Apollo in the Percy Jackson series because he drives like a really nice sports car. <laughs> Great, cracks me up. I yeah. love. I like the the way that Rick Riordan is Greek mythology in those books is is so funny. It's I great. just wish the movies were better because the movies were awful. Yeah. Oh yeah, those movies are terrible. There are so few like, the books too, dude. Like, There's like, so few like good representation of Greek mythology. They changed. Yeah, I know. They changed everything. Like I think the Greek mythology stuff in Percy Jackson is really cool, but the, the amount of stuff that they just messed up in those movies was horrible. Yeah. So. And then there was like the Attack on Titan, or what? What were they called? Attack of uh, the Wrath Titans. Of, Wrath of the Titans. At Wrath yeah. of the Titans. Yeah. What? Well, I think there's three of them. There's two. There's two, yeah. yeah. Okay. There's yeah, Clash sure. of the Titans and Wrath. Of the yeah, Titans. Clash. Yeah. That's the other they're one. They're awful. Yeah. They're so bad. They're so bad. They're horrible. <laughs> yeah. But then the original Clash of the Titans, like I watched as a kid and kind of dug it. Mm-hmm. Same with Jason and the Argonauts, like the original. Oh my gosh. Yeah. The movies are kind of fire, but yeah, here we are stuck with Clash and Wrath of the Titans. I mean, Greek mythology is so insane. Like yeah. they really have is. so many great stories and creatures and yeah. characters and like they could do a lot with that if they actually wanted to. But, yeah. but instead they'll do a movie with Hercules with the one guy that should play Hercules, The Rock. Yeah. They're like... Well, he's so, strong, uh, you know but he's not funny? really that strong. It was all a dream. It was <laughs> all the <laughs> Hilarious. I just I looked up, I, I Googled best movies about Greek mythology, right? Uh-huh. And then on Google, it says popular Greek mythology movies. Guess what's on this list? Um, I'm sure the Titans movies are. Well, but... they are, but Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? And Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. Tell me anywhere in those movies that Greek mythology has any place to play. Well, well, uh, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? It's literally the Odyssey. Yeah, it's like a break yeah, from the but, Odyssey. Yeah, it's an yeah, adaptation of the Odyssey. Which but it's like... It's uh, actually, like, a re- it does a really good job of it. it like, that movie's actually really good. Well, really good there's movie. also, like, an actual version of the Odyssey that came out that, like, tried to actually make like there be magic and stuff yeah it's like a mini series that had like a terrible budget and i just i'm like dude just mm-hmm. make it a regular movie yeah like yeah right and, exactly. and you know what saddens me is probably the only good hercules like the only like r- actual like hercules like adaptation we're gonna get or like uh-huh. mythology it's gonna be disney's when they remake it and oh, it's no. gonna probably replace hercules <laughs> dude, with oh, like no. herculea oh, and no. they're gonna you know yeah, you know, other movie was really. They're terrible. gonna make sure that Meg gets superpowers, and she's gonna remind Hercules. I don't need no man. <laughs> you know, what other movie was really terrible was Gods of Egypt. I didn't watch that. Yeah, I didn't watch that one either. Was Greek mythology, mythology. It's Egyptian play. mythology, but it was terrible. Yeah. Yikes! I well, love Egyptian mythology too. Yeah, Egyptian mythology yeah. mythology is really cool too, but that gets no representation like at all. It gets none. I think that the the once again best representation of Egyptian mythology was in Rick Riordan's other series, the Red Pyramid series. Mm-hmm. That was very very good. The dude he just loves mythology. Like he's done a Norse mythology series. He's done Greek, Egyptian. He like highlights all of them, wow. and like takes his time to tell his stories. And I I just appreciate that about him. I think that's really cool. I'm not but even someone's... super happy with most of the Norse mythology representations out there and stuff yeah. either that's fair no but it, it's it's nice to see like at least someone like you know take time to highlight some of them unlike take a lot of people so. i think uh i think god of war does one of the better god of war does really good that's norse that's norse and greek the first three games were greek so but yep. they did a good job with that they did so and then the the newest one was uh was uh norse, norse and then yeah. the second one's gonna be norse as well yeah because it's a continuation of the first one i believe and then do so. egypt please yeah oh my <laughs> goodness dude so if they did god of war like egypt yeah myth- egyptian mythology based that would be oh my gosh that would be amazing i heard that like valhalla was a mixed bag i heard there was a lot of like strange inconsistencies with it but yeah. also oh, yeah. like yeah. yeah that's that's what at least what i heard yeah but i heard it was a pretty cool game overall they did a decent job but yeah. better than most of the movies out there and stuff at least like right. yeah <laughs> as far as movies go there aren't like any with north mythology that are really that great so yeah no. not even the thor movies the thor movies completely just 
Slaughter. Well, they're way more Slaughter. based off the comics than they are based off of the actual Norse mythology. Yeah, well, so it's the, the comics, comics that suck too. That so. don't do it very well. Oh, <laughs> well, the place. comics are actually pretty legit. Yeah, but, yeah, I just but mean are as they far great representations Norse of Norse mythology? Probably not. Yeah. 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 I mean, I mean, I love Thor, both the yeah. comics and I really like yeah. the movies, but I that, it doesn't mean that they're a great representation of Norse mythology. <clears throat> yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Facts. Interesting. There's that one uh, show that I was watching a while too. It was, uh, what was it called? Um, Dude, there's a Modern a Gods Swedish or something one? like that. Oh yeah, oh, uh, yeah. Uh, no, it's um, um uh, American it's Gods. Neil Gaiman's American book, Gods. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. That was an interesting show. Yeah, I heard season one. Is that was based off good, mythology? And then season two was terrible. Yeah, season one was good and season two was. That's awful, the whole so. purpose of the show. <laughs> I I don't like, know much about it. The I, main I just... characters are like God, like yeah. the old gods. And then, like, they're confronting, like, new gods, like, technology and media mm-hmm. and stuff. And they're, like, the clash of those two ideologies and stuff. It was really cool how they did it in the show in the first season. And then the second season was just, I don't know what they were thinking with the second season. It was awful. Yikes. Yeah. yeah. Yikes. I've heard that book is really good. I think it's Neil Gaiman who wrote it. Yeah, it is. Hmm. Neil Gaiman's he's just a, a fantastic writer. He's an excellent writer, dude. Yeah. He's one of my favorite writers, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. At least... So, uh, I bet you the book's really good. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, it is good. I mean, I've read a lot of Neil Gaiman stuff. He also did Coraline, and uh, yep. he did the um, I think he book did the called Graveyard Norse Mythology, book. which is just like all of, all of some of the biggest stories in Norse mythology. It's just kind of yeah, like dude, he made did into the, a story. Uh, he did the Graveyard book, which I thought was a really good book. Yeah, um, Sandman. I think he did yep. Sandman too. Yeah. Yeah, uh, aren't, isn't there somebody doing a show about Sandman? Yeah, they're doing a Sandman yeah. show right now. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. 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 Dude's, dude's a legend. So. Yeah. Yeah. But all these uh, these gods and stuff, you know, kind of crazy. Yeah, it is kind of crazy. I mean, I was trying to look for something because I was trying to find a... Um, there was a conversation about, like, if Thor was a, like, a real person. Mm-hmm. Just, like, yeah, I always think it's fascinating when you, like, read mm-hmm. different things about, like, um, people's, like, ideas of, like, how, like, gods came to be and, like, mm-hmm. how mythology came to be and stuff like that. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Did you, uh, Josiah, did you mention this book that Neil Gaiman wrote back in, like, 2017 called Norse Mythology? Is that the one you are talking about? Yeah. 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 Yep. Sounds pretty neat. Yeah. yeah. I've read that a couple times. <laughs> Actually, that's good, too. Yeah, it is good. It's really yeah. good. But, yeah, I mean... <laughs> Ben, yeah. I have a question for you. Okay. This is this is specifically for you. Oh, okay? fire away. I, I need your theories on this. I need your, okay. your right. prime wisdom on this. Oh, my prime wisdom. <laughs> Amazon prime wisdom? Is it two-day shipping? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> two-day wisdom? So, where do you think the, the inspiration of, of the gods came from, from all these different mythologies and stuff? Why is this specifically aimed at me? Because I want to hear your, your thoughts on it. Uh, you mean for like... Like all these different mythologies, they have all these gods, and the, most of the time they're just assholes. <laughs> to, yeah, they are. <laughs> to everybody. Um, but um, they all... I mean, there's there's a lot, of, a lot of cases where there's like consistencies between some of the gods and stuff as well, like... I would uh, say like a lot of the representation of like gods and how they're portrayed comes from the characteristics of the things that they're portrayed of, of that, that they are considered the god of if mm-hmm. that makes sense like um i don't know like I, like, like thor being the god of thunder is like yeah it's he's like and storm yeah he's 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 rough and... he's brash he's he's a little bit stormy he's kind of crazy in that way right mm-hmm. and then you've got stormy like eyes aphrodite or mm-hmm. wait aphrodite's the goddess of love, love. right yeah, yeah. And love is like a cruel mistress in some ways. And I feel like that's kind of her character. So I feel like, you know, the people who like these, these mythologies that have been built around the, all these different gods, they're, they're really, their characters are very much like the things that they represent. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. That's kind of how I've always seen it. Yeah. Um, is they very much are what they are the God of mm-hmm. in some ways. Um, that's, that's always been my theory. So like maybe people like, I don't know. They saw the, 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 I don't know the best way to phrase this. Like, yeah, I don't know. The, like the, I don't, I don't like the power of the sun and they, 
Mm-hmm. Like, oh man, that's probably a god, right? You yeah, know, like Ra god, or something. Or... Right, or Ra has the power of the sun or whatever. So yeah. that's that's I, that's how I've always thought about it. But I don't I don't know I don't know. It's interesting. Mythology is a really unique history. I feel like. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's cultural. Like it's it's multicultural. It's uh, so fascinating because a lot of these mythologies are so old and stuff too. Like they're, they're from. Very... They're from like times when people, I guess, were in a lot of ways trying to find ways to explain things and stuff too, and all yeah. that. And so they turned to creating all these different gods or whatever and stuff. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. And I think I think a lot of it is that, but also it's similar it's interesting how similar different cultures uh-huh. gods and goddesses are. Yeah. Like they all have gods and goddesses of the same things for the most part. Mm-hmm. um you know especially greek and roman they're very similar oh, yeah. Well, yeah. um yeah. yeah they're they're super super similar but two mm-hmm. different cultures per se but they're they're all very similar mythology wise so yeah. it's really interesting to see like that that similarity there um and how they all kind of came to their own conclusions and the same conclusions about the same things if that yeah. makes sense. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah it's interesting with norris obviously that's a totally different part of the world but, you know, that would have been like, what, Northern Europe, right? So, you know, yep. that's still relatively separated from, from Southern Europe, which is where like Greece and, and Rome would be. But it's just interesting. I think it's, I yeah. think it's, it's just really interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And even with that, you know, there's loose similarities between Norse and, Norse and Greek, Greek and stuff. And Roman and stuff. And then Egyptian, obviously Egypt's in Africa, right? So that's like a totally... Yeah, yeah other section of the world but also still very similar in some ways um except for like the egyptian freaking love cats that's that's oh yeah that's the one thing yeah. that's totally different <laughs> yeah. well actually <laughs> actually uh snakes. The, snakes the norse cats. the norse uh loved cats as well yeah. uh freya had me. had uh cats and wool and dogs wolves uh yeah yeah obviously are a huge part of norse. so cats were actually respected with the norse and stuff as well yeah, cats not, like not in the same way as Egypt, in but Egypt. Yeah. yeah, Egypt, like, yeah, cats, cats literally. And, that, and why else do you think that I feel? I feel like that's why we often think of like, or why cats in some ways think of us as like they're peasants or like they're <laughs> humans because they, 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 they almost like they think of themselves as gods yeah. because well, they have almost that complex. And I feel like that's maybe where the inspiration has uh-huh. come. Is that well, the Egyptians were just like, okay, you want to roll up? Like, okay. hey, all right, all right. Guess we gotta worship the cats, guys. Well, we t- yeah. we talked about this in a prior episode too. Like, there's a scientist who did a study, and based on what they could understand of cat behavior, cats just see us as big dumb cats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Like they they like so when like they're meowing at you, like when their food bowl's half full, they're literally like, "Hey, dummy, I don't have any food." <laughs> yeah. Like. <laughs> and like when they come up and like lick you or whatever, they're like, "Hey, you're just a big dumb cat. I'm trying to right. help you. Like, <laughs> like yeah. are you okay? <laughs> like, so I just think that's funny that like you know we have these like people that were like revering them as gods, and they're basically like, yes, smaller or like larger, dumber cat. <laughs> well, like, yeah. and I think that's what's interesting is like ancient humans specifically probably weren't didn't discover the same things that we have now about cats and their behaviors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they probably did see them as like, you know, like these these beasts deserving of worship because also huge cats are very majestic. Yeah. So like giant cats are very majestic. They're very beautiful. And so they have this like this demeanor around them that feels almost like awe worthy. Right. So that would that would I feel like what lends to the, the worship of cats and then snakes are another thing that's just a it's a beautiful creature, but it's also very like, I don't know, like, uh, I don't know, just it's interesting i feel like well, that's, I, that's it's a similar similar it is thing interesting i think this is kind of funny and i think it shows like how like effed up times were during that apparently during the middle ages like in medieval times yeah. cats were despised by the church oh yeah yeah and they thought that they were like uh they were like Spawn associated with witches satan yeah. and dark magic yeah um it's and they were called like devils they were considered to be the devil's minions i uh, just <laughs> yep. i think that that's funny that like you had like different cultures that were like oh my gosh we love cats and we love like all these animals and stuff and then middle ages they're just they're like, just like eh, cats. they're probably evil we should hate them <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, there's some crazy stuff in in like uh, the middle ages too i mean like they there, no there's some whack apparently they tried to blame um cats for the spread of the bubonic plague not surprised yeah not surprised about it at all. they had a it, yeah it began what later turned out to be a thousand-year killing spree of cats 
I mean, wow. still, even to <laughs> this just, day though yeah like people still don't like cats near as much yeah, as a lot of other true. animals yeah. like cats are still like especially black cats still are there's tons of superstitions about black cats yeah you know there's still all this like and you know we're in 2021 at this point you know like cats are still held to like this weird regard of but like negative as opposed to positive it's mm-hmm. really it's just interesting i wonder if they feel similarly in egypt about cats as they used to um yeah that, that's I wonder a really if good they, question actually if they still admire and and almost like uh worship cats in the same way in egypt as they do Dude. as they used mm-hmm. to apparently like that shift followed cats for such a long time and like western society because in england they started believing that cats were capable of stealing a baby's breath um, oh and then like creepy. that that attitude it was so strongly believed and widely accepted there's a court case in 1791 of a cat being found guilty of infanticide and then <laughs> it followed immigrants to america and in 1929 the nebraska state journal printed a statement from a doctor who witnessed a cat like stealing a baby's breath apparently so he was trying to like they were even trying to like even as or like early or as late as 1929 we're still trying to say that cats like kill babies wow i doubt that yeah wow like, yeah. i doubt that yeah apparently that's, like that's awesome. yeah over in um like yeah even in africa like in places where it's not in egypt like not egypt other places they were always like they've been respected uh-huh. and apparently like in the Is- islamic like religion they're believed to have like the prophet muhammad said to have like loved felines mm. so apparently they were supposed to be considered like these wonderful amazing creatures there too it seems like it's just about only in the western like like england and those places that people are just like not cats are the worst yeah yeah it literally oh, is yeah 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 i, I mean why and it's so interesting because, like, right above England, you had, like, Scandinavia that loved cats. Yeah. So <laughs> I wonder how that worked out when uh, the Norse started to mingle with uh, the Britons and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. In, in Japan, cats are, all cats were generally loved. Yeah. I was going like, to say, in, in Asian cultures in general, like the Eastern cultures, I feel like cats are, like, yeah, they're a symbol of good luck, I feel like. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's interesting because there's a, I don't know if this comes from um, like um, some sort of Asian uh, mythology or something, but there's a lot of like people that point to like that cats will like find like negative energies in your house or mm-hmm. will like actually like protect your house from like demons or something like that yeah. and stuff. So <laughs> there's like a lot of that too. It's just so interesting to see like the complete shift of belief of what cats are from the west to the east yeah and even you know with like with certain parts of europe or or africa to europe right Mm -hmm. and i just think that's wild like especially with east to west yeah like obviously there's a lot of cultural differences between east and west right that's that's always how it's been but with cats specifically as a creature like you've got the polar opposites you got you know in the eastern or western culture you've got cats believed to be demonic and then in eastern culture you've got cats to believe believed to ward off demons and be yeah. a sign of good fortune mm-hmm. and it's just yeah it's, it's just so interesting it is interesting apparently you know, we come to these conclusions too because obviously we know cats as far as we know obviously don't have that kind of power well yeah both yeah. for good or bad right they're, yeah. they're animals they're very neutral they live in a neutral ground right and mm-hmm. so it's just interesting to see how people like take yeah. these creatures and like, that are just doing their thing they're just, <laughs> they're just doing their thing they're doing their cat stuff you know yeah and crazy. russians used to release a cat inside like a new house first before they moved in because of its extraordinary powerful aura apparently yeah. uh with this action the cat quickly takes action on driving away any leftover negative energy that had been wandering the house from previous occupants at the same time offering strong positive energy or maybe <laughs> Cats are just like a gift, and we didn't even know. It. <laughs> yeah, they're the gift cats, from the aliens. It all makes cats, sense. <laughs> cats are a, are, a, are a spiritual guide. I wish I could believe that, but like, then you see like tigers and lions, and they're terrifying. <laughs> Dude, but they're so beautiful, though. They are beautiful. They're, they're terrifying, and they're beautiful. But they. I once watched also... a video of a lady at a zoo, and she's like, "Oh, where's the where's the tiger? I hope you can't see her. Watch, I'll turn my back. Maybe she'll find me." And she literally turns her back on the cage, and this tiger comes out of nowhere. Because apparently, if you turn your backs on them, they can't help it. They're like, "I'm gonna mm-hmm. kill you now." Yeah, yeah. You look like prey when you're yeah. not. But yeah. it's just crazy to me. Like she literally was like 
oh, I can't find her. She's like, come on out. And she wouldn't like respond. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I'll just turn my back to the cage. And she does. And the the tiger's like, it's time to die. You like, didn't. No. All right, <laughs> let's cat, go. The tiger's like, mm, boy. <laughs> like, so I don't know. It's just funny yeah. to me because then we start getting into like bigger cat. Like, dude, it's funny to me, but it's also scary. Like, I mean, house cats alone are like kind of terrifying. <laughs> Have you ever fought a house cat? Yeah, my cat's scary. Yeah, yeah. Rat cat. Like, dude, Freaking... even fat, out of shape, like cats that like stubby legs. You're like, ah, nothing. Go dude, put that cat in a bath. That's literally watch Peggy. Thing. Yeah. 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 Peggy is fat, stubby legs. Mind. Yeah. Like all out, you know? Dude, but yeah. like, mm-hmm. that's the crazy thing about cats, though, too. It's like, this is where you start to like, you hear these things or these rumors or these mythologies about cats, right? And then you're like, man, maybe there's some truth to that. Because literally, our cat in the middle of the night just will like start yowling, like she's mm. like being possessed or she's in pain or something. But she'll like, will like wake up and she'll just be sitting there staring at us with like her toy, like right underneath her mouth. Yeah. And it's like, it's like really weird. And then she'll yeah. just speed at top speed throughout the house, just like growling. And <laughs> it's just so random and it's so weird. And you're like, why do they do this? Like, I don't, I don't know if there's any like explanation as to why they are the way Because they she's are. the devil's minion. She's a black cat. I don't know, maybe. That's, what, <laughs> that's what people in medieval times said. But maybe, yeah. maybe that's why people believed in medieval times that they were the minion of the devil, right? Because of their behaviors, yeah. even especially at nighttime. Because I'm sure domesticated cats did the same type of things then as they do now. Um, you know, or at least similar things, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. you wonder if like things like that are what lee lend, you know, or lead someone to believe, you know, that that cats are you know demonic or or what have you. Yeah, Crazy. yeah. It's funny because uh, one of our cats, Marie, she has this thing where when Nemea is sleeping in a room, the doors open. She will yeah. sleep like in the doorway, and just watch Nemea as she's sleeping and stuff. So she just lays cat. there. She just lays there and she just watches Nemea sleep. And we're like, okay, this is like super weird. <laughs> she yeah. does this and wow. stuff. And so we like looked it up and stuff, and it's apparently it's a thing that cats do when they are like protecting like their their people or something mm-hmm. they'll nice. just lay there and they'll just watch you sleep <laughs> like yeah what's up <laughs> cats are pretty cool good. though that's yeah. the thing it's like i think people don't like even to this day like i said cats are still so like i don't know like you have way more people who have dogs than they do cats and yeah. there yeah. you know there's a ton of people who are like man i don't like cats or oh, i don't like this about cats or whatever cats yeah. are such fascinating animals though yeah like, they are they really are they've got so much cultural and historical significance and and also they're just they're just really fascinating in general it's not that dogs don't dogs do but it's like cats don't get the same spotlight as dogs do mm-hmm. yeah. yeah there's also like in like egyptian mythology there's like the the sphinx and stuff too yeah right. so like they kind of have like the big cats kind of covered in a way i guess too because it's kind of yeah. like a lion and with a, a person's head or something yeah. i think like yeah. a person's head right or yeah. well like a, and even you know something that we all know pretty well the chimera yeah. you know yeah which has the body of a lion and yeah then you know, on its back has a goat head and the tail and of a snake. serpent yep yep you know or, uh, cats, let me tell isn't you. there like uh what's that one lion called too the Nemean lion i think it's what it's called or something the black lion um you're talking yeah about? it's from like greek mythology i'm trying to remember what it's what it's called yeah, the Nemean lion or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was, yeah. Like, it was, it was a, a giant lion. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was the one that was killed by Hercules. Yeah, it was supposed to be like massive. And yeah. He fought it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's pretty uh it's pretty interesting. It is. And it kind of yeah. makes sense if you know, if cats are a gift from the aliens. Because mm-hmm. like if they were brought down by the aliens to Egypt mm-hmm. and stuff, then Egypt was like, hey. Gift from the aliens. Better Freaking cats, man. Better freaking worship these things or something. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> maybe the aliens were like, you better worship these little kitties right now. <laughs> or maybe they were worshiping <laughs> the aliens inadvertently through the cats. <laughs> yeah, there yeah. you go. <laughs> the cats were like the, the cats were the vessels. Of yeah. The <laughs> yeah. Cats were like alien cell phones for. Yeah, they were they were filled with the spiritual essence of the aliens instead yeah. of the, the Egyptians. <laughs> yeah. Like shoot, we gotta freaking worship them now, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cats, cats are great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love cats. Yeah, that's Mike. Awesome. You don't have a cat, right? 
I've, I've had many cats over the years. You've had cats, but you don't have one currently. I, I was going to say. I, I Why don't, don't you have a cat right now, Mike? Yeah, because on, Mike. I don't want a cat right now. You should have a cat. Because I want them to I kill my cats. You heard it here first. I'm going to get you a cat. I never. I, I love cats. I used to have cats, Ben. I've had many cats over the years. I'm, I'm going to get you a little kitty. Ben, little you know kitty. what? I like how Ben backed. He's like, Mike, I'm joking. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. If you bring me a cat, it'll end up outside. <laughs> That'd be sad. That would be sad. Yeah. I'd be sad about that. No, one time. So one time, my mom, like where we used to live, my mom had like a cat show up and she fed it. So it just kept coming around, and then one day it showed up and dropped, um, let's see, six kittens at our door. Nice. And then died. Nice. Oh, geez. Pretty sure it died because we couldn't find it ever again. Uh, but yeah, and then it was like, they were all different colors. Like, they all, they had two sets of each color. And yeah, they used to just hang around all the time, and like, they would just, mom kept feeding them, and so they would just like, grow. And then like, a big giant cat showed up, who we think was the dad, and he kept coming by all the time. And then eventually uh, they were just like, a giant troop of cats. Amazing. No, it was kind of the worst. It's amazing. Then they just, they're like, they would sit outside and meow at us. We didn't feed them. Dude, what do you and think then... it is? Like, what do you think it is about, like, I'm sure there's, like, some sort of scientific explanation or whatever. But, like, with cats bringing you things. Like, bringing you kills that they've mm-hmm. made. You know, Because they're trying like, to teach you how to hunt. Yeah, you know how, like, cats, like, like exactly. Like, cats look, yeah. on, a look upon humans as, like, lesser beings. Yeah, which is so interesting to me because it's like this, like you know. You like, remember when we just talked about that a little bit ago about the thinking we're giant cats? Oh yeah, right. But you know, it's interesting. It's just yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. yeah, I used to have a cat, and she would, um, she'd catch a mouse, and then she'd cut it in half, and then she'd eat one of the half of the mice, and then she'd leave its gut pile and the other half of the mouse next to me, and then or like next somewhere, and she'd like meow at me really loud, and I'd chase her. I'm like, what's going on? And whatever, and then show me this gut pile and then like half of a mouse. And wow, she's, done it. It, she's done it like four or five times, and so now I'm starting to think she's like, this is how you kill. Well, see, now this is interesting. So I'm reading here that apparently no, cats will catch prey and bring to their owners because they, mm-hmm. it, it, they're, they're either using it as a teaching aid or as a gift. So they'll either bring it like, yeah, as a, as a teaching it, or additionally, they, since they're pack animals, they'll bring it as like a gift and as considering you part of the family, like they mm-hmm. want to, they want to share with their family. Right. Yeah. It's really interesting. Yep. Yeah. We used to have a cat that would bring us like half of a rabbit or something. Yeah. Sometimes. It's like, Hey, I already ate half of this, but I'm going to share it with you. Right? Yeah. 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 Cause you can't hunt for yourself, dummy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> would you like to eat this? Yeah. Are you stupid? And you're like, Oh, good job. And you're like, yeah, you're dumb. Yeah. I caught this myself. Can you catch food? I've never seen you catch a mouse. <laughs> yeah. Will you stop putting that garbage in that bowl and find me a rabbit? <laughs> Dude, we had a uh, we had a cat that brought us an entire rabbit. It was huge. The, the rabbit was like the size of the cat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's nuts. Crazy. Yeah, no, it's it's kind of crazy. I no, I actually really did cats, but no, it's funny. It's it's interesting because the other thing that is scary is that if we were like any smaller or any less like any more vulnerable as a species, I don't think we could do anything to stop cats. Like, yeah, they're like the ultimate predators. Like, I mean, we have dogs that get pretty big, but there's no, there's no dog, dog that's species. There's no dog as big as a big cat. Yeah. Like, the mm-hmm. tigers yeah. are, like, the biggest species, like, one of the biggest, like, species, predator yeah. species in, like, the world. I think a tiger would destroy a wolf pretty pretty easily. At yeah. least ground, at least on the ground, yeah. Like, yeah. On, yeah. Yeah, the nice thing, the thing that, like, about wolves and, like, dogs and stuff is, like, their loyalty to each other and stuff like that and the fact that they, like, work together. Well, they're yeah. also pack animals. <laughs> So, like, that's why they work together. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> the great thing about dogs is that they work together. Yeah, they're pack animals. <laughs> they're pack animals, Michael. Didn't you know that they're pack animals? Well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> also, the tiger is the third largest land carnivore. So, wow. doesn't that make it one of the largest predators? It does uh, in the world, but. which is what I said. I did not say they're the biggest. I said they're one of the biggest. Dude, Just obviously, like I said that wolves work together, which implies that they're like pack animals. No, they're not <laughs> like pack animals. They are. 
pack animals. <laughs> Get it right, Michael. Oh, I was right a long time ago. But please continue. You know what, Josiah? Let's yeah. give Ben the floor. Yeah, sounds good. I literally have don't, nothing to say. Do not leave any dead air, Ben. I don't have anything to say. No, you have no, you, to say. you always have plenty to say, Ben. No. <laughs> what Take if? Take the floor. What if we we found out that we were actually being controlled by aliens and cats this entire time? This is just a big TV show set on Josiah. for the cats. Josiah already said that earlier. <laughs> like we're living in an alien sim or something? Yeah, it's just cats watching it. We're just alien sims. Cats are oh playing God. it. We are the sims for the cats. <laughs> the Egyptians were that. right all along. They literally knew it was a simulation from the beginning. Yeah, they tried to why tell. They worshipped the cat. That's why Bast is so like important because they Bast is who they believe to be the creator of the simulation. Yeah. I mean, that's literally why they created py pyramids to point at the skies and be like, hey, look right? up. Look Breaking up there. Cats, man. <laughs> Those cats. <laughs> Make a giant <laughs> sphinx. Be like, hey, look, everyone. It's, it's a cat. It's mostly cat. <laughs> the so secret to actually, everything is the cat. It's super weird that you guys say that because that's the answer about the universe, the dude. Simulations. Because I actually saw an article and read a story earlier today about a lady from a couple years ago who was like, part of like a big software company that was just starting up mm -hmm. and she went to like some conference in california somewhere in san diego or something anyways she went there and she was only going to stay for like four days and then come home yeah. and then like the day she was supposed to come home her parents got a call from her and she was like freaking out on the phone and she's like telling them that there was all a big simulation and that nothing was real and that she figured out like all of like what we understand is like fake and none of it like really exists and stuff and then like hung up and then they found her like two days later dead Oof. and in a rental car that they didn't know she had bought or anything yeah oh wow and it was kind of nuts because you know I'm creepy there's like it feels like there's like a lot more feelings and like stories about that, which I think aliens came to get her. Us doing a whole episode about the simulation theory would be kind of legit. The simulation. There's some crazy theories about that. Yeah. I mean, heck, even Elon Musk says we're li it's very plausible that we live in a simulation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Like this isn't the modern day world, but it's actually a simulation of what we believe to be. He said, "There's a world. there's a one in a bil in billions chance we're we're in base reality, and he believes that we're more than likely by a lot. The world we know is just a very sophisticated computer simulation. Nice, yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, if if Daddy Musk says it, then you know, dude. Sometimes with the stuff that happens, you're like, man, this this has got to be a simulation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah which is exactly. odd because yeah, I don't know. I've just been doing a lot of reading about stuff like that. But, like, there was even yeah. a guy who talked about how." Um, it was just like weird happenstance. I was reading stories about weird happenings and like glitches in the Matrix. Mm -hmm. This guy was talking about how one day he went to go walk up the stairs and it was like late at night or whatever and he was going to bed and he started walking up the stairs and he was like, it's like eight stairs or something. Like, and he's walked it a million times. And he started walking up the stairs and he walked up the stairs for like 10 minutes and he started getting freaked out because he couldn't figure out like why his stairs weren't ending. Oh wow! And like he was like, dude, he's like, I wasn't even that tired. Like I walked those stairs a million times, but he kept like freaking out because he couldn't figure out like why he was walking up the stairs. And then he it didn't end until his brother came out, like came to the top of the stairs and like flipped on the light. He's like, dude, what are you doing? He's like, I've been hearing like somebody walk up the stairs for like the last ten minutes. That's and the guy crazy. was like, yeah, wow. the guy was like, dude, and there was just eight <clears throat> stairs, but he found himself like in the middle of the staircase. Uh huh. Yeah, man. Freaking weird, yeah. dude. Huh. Yeah. Dude, this makes me want to talk about, obviously, we don't have time for today's episode, but something I'd like to talk about. Ben, too. I swear to God, if you tell me that you want to talk about simulations <laughs> and glitches in the Matrix on the next episode, I'm going to come at you like a spider no, monkey. I I'm going to break the simulation, and I'm going to find you. <laughs> I want to talk about Deja Vu. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. I've because always... Because the Matrix. Well, yeah, because I've always wondered what Deja Vu is, right? And... <laughs> To me, one of my favorite theories, um, which we can always talk about later, like I said, when we have more time, is uh, the deja vu is us as humans had naturally have the ability of foresight, and we just don't know it. Yeah. Yeah. 
And so we're re- we're almost reliving a memory, even though it's not a memory. Yeah, yeah. that's always just been a theory of mine because it's such a fa- it's such a phenomenon that it's like it's just fascinating to me. Like, I think whole- we talked about deja vu on the uh, what was that one, the Mandela Effect episode? I think probably time ago. Maybe uh, yeah. do you remember? We could revisit that? it, dude. Yeah, yeah, we can absolutely. But even it. with even with the whole simulation theory, I feel like deja vu could tie into that that whole theory anyway um just with with some of the different things even if like if you live a simulation there could be a chance that you've lived something twice you know yeah or we just keep living the same simulation over and over again and just sometimes we remember the base parts of it because it's like a computer or even laptop. like yeah dude what if you like have it started like what if what if you actually did live in a simulation but then you started having flashbacks and memories of a previous life that wasn't in a simulation that'd be crazy yeah Whack. Wow. Could happen. Wow. If you take some drugs, it might happen. Yeah, saying. it might. It might. Never know. <laughs> might. Dude, we start getting into we start getting into mushrooms and talking about some of the weird, yes. weird stuff that have happened. Like there's like this really weird story apparently from people that have taken shrooms that they meet these like small, like mm-hmm. these tiny like tiny Ben people. would love them because Ben loves small people. But like <laughs> These tiny, like, weird, like, gnome creatures yeah, that yeah. apparently, like, are supposed to be, like, engineers that, like, try to warn us of, like, the world not being what we think it is and stuff. And, like, apparently there's, like, a consistent, like, theme with that, like, people meeting these small people. Guess we gotta go on a trip, guys. Well, I'm not gonna interesting take that you say that because the, uh, the Vikings to... used to take shrooms and stuff, too. Okay. And they used to have all these crazy visions with them, yeah. like, the gods and um like elves and dwarves and stuff and yeah. so yeah same Maybe. thing basically you know yeah. freaking whack like, dude what if we lived in yeah what if what if the simulation really is run by like a bunch of people like elves and dwarves are just all right just what we understand mm-hmm. of how the world works or how things you know function and maybe the elves and dwarves these are these little people that are also the little michael jackson aliens that the kids in uganda saw or Zimbabwe, Maybe. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Rude. Rude. <laughs> I know we I know, you know, listen, guys, week to week we say we're gonna talk about things and we were gonna talk more about these aliens, but we got really st- talking about cats, and I think yeah. that's really fascinating. I, legendary. I love it that we can just go into a completely different subject than what yeah. we're planning. Listen, we got a whole string of things we want to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Hollow Earth. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah simulation theory yes just, yeah. just know that we will be talking about these things at some point we're gonna have a cryptid another cryptids episode where we go beyond bigfoot listen there's a lot of some crazy there's some crazy things yeah People yeah see exactly. some crazy stuff there's all over the world and of course stuff. we will be returning to aliens again yep. because well, we always incredible. come back to aliens, <laughs> because because aliens come, no matter aliens how come far we try to get away from aliens <laughs> it comes back to aliens Yep. yeah exactly it's but the true. whole simulation idea kind of reminds me of that free guy movie that's coming out too free guy and even the truman show truman show yeah mm-hmm. yeah how ben just like punched your theory out yeah. of the sky. <laughs> it's like, like and the truman show better <laughs> dude i'm excited for free guy. because that was a real simulation <laughs> i'm excited for free guy. so i ben? don't know what mm-hmm. to think about free guy because if you watch the newest trailer it is a totally different movie than what the previous trailer was like it's we'll a see. different it's a different motivation in the original trailer if you watch it he was just a guy that got like he found the glasses and like got woke or whatever mm-hmm. and found out that the world around him was like wasn't what he realized because he like stood up to like the programming yeah but in this new trailer it's this girl that he meets that like gives him the glasses yeah, yeah. and it's like hey you got to wake up so it might even be a totally then now, now he's like a main character versus before he was like a no a nobody who mm-hmm. got like popular now he's like the a chosen one or he's like supposed to be awake or something yeah I exactly know. i have no idea either way i'm excited to see i it. mean i do because yeah. i Love just Ryan explained Reynolds. it to you because i watched the trailer i'm excited nice. for it too did you watch the uh like the reaction between deadpool and and no, i have not gosh. seen that yet it was so good so I good dude i gotta watch it <laughs> but i am i so I'm gonna be honest. I'm a little concerned about Free Guy now that they changed it. So yeah. Much. It'll, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. I, I actually like the second trailer better than the first one. Yikes. So yeah. Same. Same. Yep. Ben, you haven't even seen it. You didn't watch the reaction between Korg and Deadpool. Same. <laughs> so good. So All right, good. Ben. 
What's your weekly recommend? Mm. I know what it's going to be. Well, let me tell you about this beautiful movie. <laughs> Don't I fucking it. say it. <laughs> I knew it! <laughs> uh, go. Wow, Ben. Come, come back to me. Okay. To me. I'll have Michael? Some, yeah, by the time you guys are done. Hey, I, so I've been going back and watching some old school stuff. And okay. if you haven't had a chance to, there's a show. used to come out on the Cartoon Network back in the day called Samurai Jack. I went back and rewatched the whole series and then rewatched the final season. Dude, Samurai Jack is fire. That show was so ahead of its time and is still, to me, one of the best animated television shows of all time. Like, yeah. Hands down, one of the best. It has some of the best music, some Single of the best visuals. Thanks, Ben, for interrupting. You know what? Freaking watch Samurai Jack. <laughs> and don't watch whatever the hell Ben suggests. <laughs> Um, my weekly recommend is going to be Black Widow. What? Yes. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. I I Refuse. enjoyed I enjoyed the movie. It's a good I don't movie. believe you. And um, they effed up Taskmaster. Well, I, I, li- Red I, I don't know. I liked the Taskmaster stuff. I, thought I didn't think. I don't. I don't think they really effed up Taskmaster Me necessarily. Either. I thought it was cool. I mean, if you're a comic fan and you knew the character, maybe. But I literally had no idea, and so like, yeah. I don't know, the character was just there as like just an obstacle. It's a foil and stuff, and yeah. So it's not a foil, Ben. If they don't have any character development, I mean, they do. No. You didn't see the movie, so you I mean, read about the movie. I read the. You mean with Black Widow? Black Widow does not have very much character development. That you know why? Because black. they're trying to replace her with her sister. Yeah, her sister. That was the whole point anyway. of the movie. Was they replace? That's the point, Ben. They want you to forget about her so no, they can replace. I can't forget it. about Black That's Widow. That's literally what they're doing. Black okay, Widow. listen. Black Widow is the. Listen, I know we're getting ready to clap out here, but listen, <laughs> you guys need to wake up to the fact that right now they are trying to replace these characters from pre- previous movies and iterations so they can do Phase Four and pretend that they reinvented the freaking wheel. Watch, I guarantee you. I was excited about Black Panther 2. Black Panther 2 is going to come out, and they're going to try really hard to pretend like they started this new black superhero trend, and they're going to try to forget all about the previous movies and everything else that anybody has done with those things. They're trying to erase the history of the previous MCU so they can bring this new MCU to light. That's why they. That's why there's a female Loki Mike. now. That's why, you know, Mike. now there's no more Steve Rogers. And you know what? I don't know if you've heard the rumors, but Chris Evans is supposed to come back as a bad guy so that they can erase his history as a good guy and replace okay, him with Sam Wilson. Pissed if they do Mike. that. Well, it's in the comics. <laughs> it's in well, the yeah. comics. Yeah. Yeah. I know. yeah. He comes back as Hydra. Yeah. That's the rumors that he's coming back as a bad guy. Like, yeah, I, I would understand that if they did that, like, in the middle of, like, his arc or something, but to, nope. like, do that as kind of like the Toy Story 4 for, <laughs> for Captain that's, America. That's what I'm saying. Y'all gotta wake up. <laughs> Don't let them do it. Mine. Do not let them replace Black Widow. Scarlett Johansson worked her never. ass off for of that role. And and they're trying so hard to replace her with her much cooler sister, because that's been the, the narrative I've heard from everybody. Oh, nah. her sister is so great. Her I, I, so still, awesome. I still like Black Widow better because I'm well, a yeah. Black Widow fan. So. But they Mine. killed her. They killed her off so they could replace yeah, her I with know. her poor sister. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. Mike. What, Ben? If you say my name Mike. one more time. I know you're upset. And all those things you say may be true. They are true. But that's not the point right now. The point right now is weekly recommends. And you're breaking that. <laughs> ben, you broke the rule on what weekly recommends <laughs> earlier when you interrupted I, me. Mike, I don't ben, to see you what's your weekly recommend? recommend? Huh? Mike. Suggest something. Mike. Shut up and suggest something, Ben. Come on. Give oh. us something. Weekly uh, recommend. Go. Uh, come, on. come on. Come on. Come on. Watch. <laughs> weak sauce. You. You weak lion. No. <laughs> Suggest something, Ben. No. Go out and uh, go out and and watch some some good shark Black shows Widow. this week. Go watch uh, Black Widow. No, no literally. Shh. Go watch some shark shows this week. Shark this shows. Week, this week is shark. No. <laughs> Hey, no, this week is this week is Shark Week. Shark Week. What? Have some freaking respect for the, the the greatest apex predator and go watch some shark shows. There's gonna be some really good shark educational shows. content on this week. Shark shows. What are some shark, shark shows, shows Ben? Can shark you shows. List shark some of those for people shows. listening. What are some good shark shows to go check Name out? Name a shark show, Ben. No. 
All right. <laughs> ben can't even watch Shark. He saw an ad for Shark Week. He's like, oh, I got it. Shark shows. Shark shows. Some no. Some what the frick is a shark it. show? Okay, no. Uh, you know what I'm trying to say. I'm saying. Nope, I don't say know. Television programs that are like there's Baby Shark. You can watch on YouTube. Yeah. There's you Street Shark. I I tried. Isn't there Shark Tales? Yeah. Isn't that a movie or something? That came yeah. out a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, one of the worst animated movies of all time. <laughs> yeah. There's sharks in Finding Nemo. That's cool. Yeah. Hey, yeah, go check out Shark Week, like Ben yep. said. Shark shows, shark shows, shark shows <laughs> on Shark Week. Watch, watch all them shark shows out there, everyone. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just knew that if I asked Ben, can you name some shark shows? <laughs> he wouldn't actually have any shark shows to name. <laughs> But yeah, go check out Shark Shows, everyone. Go go do that. So with that being said, <laughs> we hope that you enjoyed this week's episode of the Epic Man podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, pray for Ben. He needs it desperately. And uh, we will catch you all next week in another episode. <laughs> Have a great Bye. day. Bye.